first off say thank you for joining BMI for our webinar, Hiring in the Digital Age. Um, it is my pleasure to welcome you to this webinar featuring Emily Wren. Uh, for those of you who attended our management conference in Georgia, you got to meet Emily. She is a former manufacturing HR manager turned recruiter and small business owner who wants to bridge the gap between hiring managers, recruitment firms, and candidates. In addition to helping companies find top talent, she trains internal HR teams to think and act like an external recruiter. And I am going to turn it over to Emily. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much for taking time out of your day to be a part of this webinar. I'm excited about it, and I hope that everyone gets a little something from this. Um, we are going to try and save questions for the end, but go ahead and use the chat feature and Matt is going to kind of monitor that so we can make sure everyone gets their questions answered. But I'm going to go ahead and get started because we have a lot of information I want to get to everyone. And of course, I want to make sure we have plenty of time for questions at the end. So um, I really, you know, if you were at the conference um, in, what was it, April, I think, um, we talked a lot about millennials and that got into the topic of kind of how, we talked a little bit about hiring and how hiring needs have changed. And so really, I, I kind of wanted to kind of focus a little bit on that part of it because I deal a lot in manufacturing. Um, that is really my niche market. And of course, a lot of manufacturers have issues finding qualified talent. So I want to cover a couple things um, and let me figure out, oh, here we go. So we're going to go over a couple things today. One is the current failing system. So what is working and what is not working currently with, with hiring? Um, we're going to go over how, I know a lot of manufacturers specifically, and, and really that branches out to anyone in the trades has a weary sense of having an online presence, the good, the bad. I want to talk about really why you should have an online presence. I want to go over where to spend your time and money. I mean, money is, it, recruiting can be a big portion of a budget to try and find people. So I want to talk about how to spend it a little bit, make your money go further. Searching effective, efficiently, I want to show you some tips and tri tricks that us recruiters use when we are searching for candidates. Um, we're going to talk about how to utilize the different social media network platforms. I think that there's a lot of different ways that some people may not think of to use some social media for recruiting. Advertising tips, I'm gonna go over pros and cons behind advertising for your jobs and how to make some of these advertisements appeal better to your candidates. Weeding out the weeds, so weeding out the bad um, and figuring out who is your better candidates before you actually hire them and then have to deal with the expense of hiring and letting go and having the ones who don't work out. The motivation behind uh, the candidates and why you can, why they might be interested in leaving where they are and coming to work for your organization. And then efficiency tools. There's some tools that I use every single day that make me work smarter and not harder. And they save a lot of time, a lot of energy whenever I'm, I'm doing my searches. So first, the, the current hiring trends. Um, I don't have to tell anyone in this conversation that hiring trends are not working. There are things that are failing with the system that are just not attractive to candidates. Um, number one is all of those applicant tracking systems that we have all, and I say we because I was in HR for a very long time, uh, we have all invested in or wanted to invest in and spent thousands of dollars investing in, you know, yes, they are useful, but a lot of times you're turning people off with them. So sometimes, and, and especially for the lower level employees, 
who may not have, you know, your production employees, they may not have a resume. They may not have a very good resume and they may not even have access to a computer a lot of times. So leaning on the applicant tracking systems to have these employees apply, but then depending on how it's set up, it may take 30 minutes to fully you know, get in there, apply for your positions and submit it. And then if the HR, if the, if the applicant tracking system does not have the keywords that this resume may not have, you might not see it or it might get caught up. So I suggest using your applicant tracking systems because they can be very, very helpful, but I think you need to streamline them. So I would suggest business owners, HR leaders to actually submit a resume, submit a resume to an open position, just as if you were a candidate and see how easy or difficult it is to actually apply for a position. And then from the HR side, seeing how it shows up, um, seeing how you know, this resume, and I would even suggest maybe having a current employee who has a, who is in that position applying for it and seeing how it shows up because you want to make sure you're using these systems to their best ability for you, not the best ability that the applicant tracking system company has told you it is. Um, you know, we, I currently don't have an applicant tracking system because I, I don't need one now, but a lot of times they tell you all these features which is great if you're hiring nothing but, you know, white collar managers or accountants or, you know, people like that. But for what we do in manufacturing, they may not be the most efficient way to do things. So don't rely too much on your applicant tracking systems to find your people. A lot of times it discourages employees or potential employees to apply. They go, they see your ad on Indeed or Career Builder or wherever, and then it takes them to your website. Well, now they have to enter a path, you know, they have to create a password. They have to create a username. They have to now remember everything. And then it, it discourages a lot of people. So don't rely too much on them. I think they're beneficial, but I wouldn't spend, you know, all day using that as your number one source. Number two, I think we're allocating our hiring costs a little bit off. I think you really need to look at how much you're spending in advertisements, how much you're spending, you know, doing staffing, you know, the actual recruiter that you may or may not have, and of course, how much you're paying those pesky recruiters that are out there. Um, I really think you need to look at it and see if it would be more beneficial to hire an internal sourcer. Now, a sourcer is, should be the same thing as a recruiter, but what I've found is a lot of times recruiters turn out that their job is to review the resumes that are coming in from your advertisements. So now you're paying for your advertisements, you're paying a recruiter who is the first stop at reviewing these resumes, but a lot of times a sourcer can go out and seek out the candidates. So even your entry level people, you can find someone, and I'm gonna give you some examples here in a little bit, but you can find someone who can actually enter in some keywords. And if you have other manufacturers in your community, they might have production employees, maybe they don't know the binding side of things, but they've ran a machine and a sourcer can reach out to them and, and encourage them to leave where they are, come work for you. And sometimes that might be more beneficial than getting the candidates that are applying to anything that is out there. Um, you breed a different val a different breed of candidates when you are looking to bring someone in because they are so great versus someone who may be unemployed and is looking for anything that is out there. So that brings me to depending on the end the market candidates. We are using these av advertisements, which are great, but again, they, they take up a lot of budget for posting on these websites. And, you know, they, it relies on candidates who are actively looking. 
they are the ones who are applying to not only your job, but every other job except for the companies that they have worked with. So they're not, sometimes they're the best candidates, but they're not always the best candidates that you can try and bring onto your team. Yes, it takes time. Yes, it does take energy to reach out to people, but I am going to show you some efficiency tools as well that makes it see, not seem as daunting. I think we're also losing focus on, we're trying to sell, we're trying to get the employees, but we need to kind of sell the company a little bit to the employees. At the, on the panel, we spoke about the conference, we spoke about, you know, the, the people these days is, you know, what's in it for me. And I think we need to, when we're doing our advertisements or we are trying to reach out to candidates, we need to show them up front the what's in it for me, what this company can do better than maybe the company you're at now. And it doesn't take a lot. It takes, a, it takes figuring out what makes that person tick, but I'm also going to give you some, some tips for that as well. But really, you've got to sit down with your current employees and, and figure out why someone would want to leave where they are and come work for you. And once you know that answer, that's your sell. That's, that's how you reach out to candidates and say, hey, you are a phenomenal candidate. I would love to you know, bring you onto our team. This is X, Y, Z, what we have going on. And that X, Y, Z is the reason someone would want to come work for your company. So we need to put that out there in front on our advertisements, on anytime we reach out to someone, that's, that's your goal. That's what you want to display to people so that they want to come work for you. And then, you know, a lot of companies, the, I know one of the things somebody mentioned at the, at the conference was, you know, bad reviews and a, a, a disgruntled employee or ex-employee coming in, leaving a bad review, or, you know, I personally worked for an organization that had a bad reputation in the community. They would constantly hire people, then constantly lay off. And it's a struggle to overcome a bad corporate reputation. And it happens. Um, you know, I'm not saying any of you have a bad reputation. I'm saying maybe you know of a company that has a bad reputation, but we've got to address that as well. So you've got to work on addressing the bad reputation, which brings me to managing expectations. You've got to address the bad and manage the expectations of your potential hires. You know, tell them the process that happens. You cannot, you know, your managers, I mean, I'm sure if I asked you, all of you would say, hey, yes, I will take an experienced operator who's worked in book binding for the last 30 years and only wants $12 an hour. Um, all of you would say, yes, I'll take him, but that's also not realistic. So you've got to, from an HR perspective, from a management perspective, manage the expectations for the job that you're looking for. If you are looking for a very entry level production employee, the expectations of the hiring process should be less and with less red tape than the expectations of if you are hiring a high level operations manager. And those have to be set up front. Um, I know personally when I was in HR, I would have a candidate who had everything, they, they had the attitude, they had the will to work, they had some production experience, but they were willing to take, you know, $9 an hour to start off on third shift just so that they could have a, an in with this company. Well, sometimes the hiring manager didn't want to hire that person because they had no experience. So we've got to start changing the mindset of, okay, not everyone is going to have all of the experience we want them to have. Some people are going to have tiny bit of experience, but they have the will to work. And that can be more valuable in the long run than the people who have 30 years of experience, but also 30 years of bad habits. 
So embracing an online presence, you know, a lot of times people are worried about having an online presence because of the bad reviews that might come in. Indeed, LinkedIn and Glassdoor and Google, well, realistically now, and Facebook, people can leave reviews. You can get five stars, you can get two stars, you can have a disgruntled employee come in and say how horrible it was and how, you know, the, the working conditions were awful. And yes, that might be something you don't want out there or you don't want people to see. But the reality is the new incoming people, even now, I, I would say even now that these are available, I mean, how many of you have you used Yelp for a restaurant when you're in a new town? Um, you know, my dad uses it all the time to try out new places. And so these are the Yelp for your business. The Indeed, you can have a, a page on Indeed, and we're going to, I'm going to show you some of that. LinkedIn, I, I have said it before and I will continue to say it. LinkedIn is your friend for free. You can post jobs, you can connect with candidates, you can do all sorts of things using the free version of LinkedIn. Glassdoor, you, you may know this, HR people probably do. When you post a job on CareerBuilder, Indeed, uh, ZipRecruiter, any of those websites, usually they will link to Glassdoor. Now, if you don't have a company page with Glassdoor, you cannot comment on anything that might be posted about you or your organization. Once you create and link your company and certify that, yes, I am a representative of this company, then you can reply. So let's say you have someone who comes in and they leave a horrible review. Well, you can reply back and say, you know, I am sorry that our policy is that you have to work on time. And now I'm not suggesting that you are combative with a bad review, but you can leave reviews or leave comments back so that when others are coming to see this organization and they see that you've responded, that shows that you care. So... I think it's important that you have a presence on all of these. You don't have to have a huge presence. You're all already on Google because Google does that automatically. I also think you can encourage your employees to leave reviews. Now, they can leave secret reviews. They can be, you know, anonymous or they can say who they are, but it allows you to have opportunity. A bad review is an opportunity to make change. For your current employees, if they see, hey, now, now we're getting on to all of these things that they want us to leave a review, an honest review. Now, if they're your current employees, more than likely the, the review is not going to be horrible. But when you do get a bad review, that's an opportunity. It, it's, a, it's a place where you can say, okay, somebody left a review about... Um, and I, I'm trying to think of an example, maybe our overtime policy. Well, let's, let's get to our CQI team, because I'm sure all of you have a CQI initiative, and figure out how we can improve on this. And usually people who are looking at reviews can tell the difference between a disgruntled employee and a legitimate concern. But I, I definitely encourage you to have your employees leave a review that gets it started because people are looking at it. When I go to work with a company as a recruiter, I look up that company to see what people are saying about them because I know that's what my candidates are going to go do. So if your candidates are out there and, and that will help you learn your reputation, I highly encourage you to Look into having a linked account. Um, I know your HR teams are going to say, no, please don't add another thing on my list. But I definitely think it's a good place for HR to start on. Um, and, and I think it doesn't hurt. Um, you know, I spoke about having somebody doing your sourcing. I, I don't think it hurts to hire the same person. You know, if you're looking into that option, the same person who does your sourcing can also link and, and handle all of these accounts. Well, 
you could have a part-time person doing some of this. So you don't, you know, you don't have to worry about insurance and things like that. Um, these days, I would say that there are a lot of people who are interested in home-based work. And I know in manufacturing, people say, no, well, we need everyone here. And I agree with that. But if you were to hire an intern or a social media, you know, millennial type person, you could have someone do part-time work for this. Um, you know, you could have them do this sourcing or social media and have them do it from home. And any bad, any good reviews, they can say, oh, thank you so much. We're so glad you were happy with our facility. And any bad reviews then have to be gone, you know, have to be sent to the managers and say, I have a bad review. How would you like me to address this? So you can manage them if they're working from home doing this. It doesn't take a lot. I'm sure some of you might have, especially in the summertime, you might have high school students that would be willing to do this for you know a very low wage so that they're not working at a pizza place. But I think it would be a good way for you to open the door a little bit to kind of get into technology, but also you could have someone who does a little bit of sourcing for you. And I'm, I'm not going to tell you the whole day to constantly hire, you know, young millennials to do stuff on the internet for you. But I would say that this would be a good opportunity to look into something your HR teams could do or potentially hire someone to, to do something like this from home on a very minimal part-time basis because it does not take a lot of time to do any of this. So sourcing versus advertising. I, I kind of mentioned that before, but um, when I was in HR, I relied heavily on the advertising. Uh, you're, when you're when you're looking at advertising, you're posting the ads, getting the resumes. Uh, you're not going for the people who are not looking necessarily or people who are passively looking. You're going after anyone who's interested in any opportunities. So I definitely think that when you're, when you're looking at sourcing them and passive candidates, you're reaching out to the candidates who are happy where they are but it goes back to that what's in it for me. Maybe the grass is greener at this organization and they've got something that would be more beneficial for me. So internal recruiters, they should know this. They should be going after some of these passive candidates. And if they're not, then we need to look at redirecting them to, I will tell you when I was in HR, up until probably the last six months at the organization I was at, I was relying heavily on advertising. Well, once I switched over and decided to start messaging candidates on LinkedIn or Indeed, I started seeing a different caliber of candidates. And it was easier to fill my roles in a shorter period of time because I was reaching out and automatically people feel, oh, well, they're reaching out to me. I must have value. Well, then I reinforce that they have value by telling them, I found your resume or I found your profile and I really think that you have great assets that would be a benefit to my organization. Are you interested in hearing about other opportunities? So I definitely think that your internal recruiters need to learn more about sourcing versus reviewing the resumes. So I personally think advertisements should be supplementary with sourcing. So especially for the mid-sized to smaller organizations, the time should be spent sourcing people or doing different methods, and, I'll, and we'll get into it in a little bit, different methods of finding people other than posting ads. You know, CareerBuilder charges up to $500 for an ad. Indeed could be $800 plus, depending on how long you're leaving the ad up or what your program is with them. So by spending your time looking at candidates, that's all I do as a recruiter. I do not spend any money placing advertisements. So I really think with the small to mid-sized companies, you source first and advertise second because you get a different, you're able to find candidates rather quickly and turn it around to try and not even spend any money 
doing the advertisements, you're spending the time and effort on reaching out to people. So I know if there's any HR people, you're saying there's not enough time, there's not enough time. And I get that because I was saying the same exact thing. But when you, if you remember, I went back and I said the what's in it for me, the, you know, why would somebody leave their organization and come work for your organization? Well, that's your pitch. And I'll show you one of my pitches here in just a few minutes. But I use the same pitch for the same company every single time. I change the format or the wording for the, for the job I'm looking for, and I don't change anything else because I found the what's in it for the candidate, what's going to pull the candidate in, and I copy and paste it. I don't, it doesn't take a lot of time for me to reach out to, I would say, 50 plus people in a day and I may hear back from 10 of them, but I know that those 10 are already qualified. So I'm not spending time blindly reaching out to, to 50 people and only hearing back 10 from 10 of them. I'm hearing back from 10 candidates I know are already qualified for the job. So it takes the time a little bit less than having to weed through, and I'm sure some of you have received 500 resumes and 450 of them are not even relevant to the position at all. So it, it changes it because you're no longer spending the time reviewing. You're, you're pl not playing defense. You're playing offense with it. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with Boolean searching. Um, I don't know if there's a hand raise or if there's anybody who can say, yes, I'm familiar with it. But when I was in HR, it was something I kind of knew. Um, I kind of knew that if you typed and that you would get a lot more. But now that I'm on this side of things, it's something I use every day for everything. So business owners, business leaders, I highly encourage you to start using this. Um, it is a great way if you're looking for new vendors in a specific area, you can use a Boolean search to find them without having to weed through a lot of Google searches. Anything you are possibly looking for can be related back to Boolean searching. It's really a way to efficiently search for candidates. You can enter any kind of keywords. If there's a specific system you use, you can enter that and it will come up anybody who has that listed. Um, and I definitely, this is critical, on your job descriptions or advertisements that you have at your organization, keep track of the search strings that work because it definitely takes time to figure out what works. And when I say time, I don't mean it takes 40 hours to figure out what works. It just takes trial and error to figure out kind of what search strings work for what position. So I recommend keeping track of the search string that works, add it in your job advertisement or add it in your job description. So that way, when you're looking for it again, you can go right back to it and not have to spend the time going back and forth on it. So this goes back to work smarter, not harder. Uh, you know, when you're keeping track of these, and we're going to use some examples here in a minute, but when you're keeping track of these, it's definitely, it, and you'll see, it's definitely a way to use your time wisely so you're not looking through a bunch of resumes or a bunch of profiles that mean nothing to you. So quotes, um, and, and I will make sure that you guys have a copy of all of these so you don't feel like you have to take a bunch of notes or screenshots with this, but quotes, if you're looking for the exact phrase, so this came from one of my training documents, so I didn't, I didn't change the, the words for, to make it relevant for you guys. But if I'm looking for a validation engineer, I will put it in quotes, and only things that list validation engineer are going to come up. This is probably a popular one that you might have heard about. Um, and is another one that I use almost every day. This is going to expand, or this is going to limit it. So when you're working with quotes, anything that lists validation engineer will come up. It has to say validation and engineer next to each other. So when you are using and, anything that has validation 
and engineer. So now you're going to get things that you want to kind of limit it a little bit. So validation and engineer will come up. So it, it limits your search to results that include both. Um, and you, again, you have to kind of play with this a little bit to, to see how it works with what you're doing. And I'm going to use some examples of these with the actual social media sites. Or as another one. So now it's if you want validation or engineer, it's going to show up anyone that has both of those words on their profile or both of those words on their resume. So sometimes it, people think it's an either or option, um, but it's really you got to have either validation or you have to say engineer, but you could also have both validation engineer on there. Um, which is why it's kind of all colored in now because it will show you anything with that. With this, your searches are going to be very broad. Um, you're going to get a lot more with an or than you would with an and. So not, this is a good one if you don't want to include anyone who works for your organization. So you can say validation, not engineer, so you're only going to get things that say validation, or you could say production, not, in, you know, refined search solutions. So it will give you anything that has a production, but not people who work for my organization. Or if there is a specific production type that you do not want, you do not want somebody from this type of industry, you know, maybe production, not CNC then it will show you things where it does not have the phrase CNC in it. Parentheses, this is a complicated one and it reminds me a lot of algebra and I'm horrible at math. So this one does get complicated and my example has not only the quotes, but also or and and. So it kind of, it does get a little complicated, but I am going to show you an example of this in a live um, demonstration. But it's definitely a more complex one. So I am looking for a validation engineer, it has to have that phrase, and or somebody in pharmaceutical. So it could be a validation engineer or somebody who has pharmaceutical listed on their profile. And I want it to be in Daytona Beach. So it's first going to look for things that are validation engineer or pharmaceutical. That's going to be the first thing it looks for. And then it's going to look for anybody who falls into those categories located in Daytona Beach. And I know this is, it took me a little bit to work out how to use these efficiently, but it doesn't take a long time once you kind of get your first few strings and see how it works. Um, so now I'm going to get into the actual social media networks and I have examples. We're going to go to my live social media network. So who knows what might be up there, but we're going to go to my live social media networks and kind of take a look at some of these. So LinkedIn, like I said, is your friend for free. It's a great sourcing tool. Um, recruit a lot of third party recruiters use LinkedIn exclusively. It is a great way to get people who, I mean, they, they'll know computers, they'll know different things, but even for your production employees, you'd be surprised how many are on LinkedIn. Um, I actually encourage you to have your employees join LinkedIn um, because what they're going to do, just like anybody kind of does when they get on a, first, on a social media network for the first time, they're gonna go in and find people who are like them. So they're going to go and connect and LinkedIn behind the scenes, if they enter, I am a uh, bindery operator, they're going to go in and it will say people who you, who, people who you might be interested in or something, some phrase like that. Um, and it will show them other people who have similar titles. They're going to go and they're going to connect with them. Well, now your sourcing person or your HR team can go and see who they are connected with that might also be, but that also expands the network. So as you get into LinkedIn, I can see if I'm connected with you, I can now see who you are connected with and your third connections. Well, 
as you connect with more people, you have access to more candidates who would be like-minded. So I encourage you to tell your employees to join because they'll do some of the work for you. And you can also post and advertise your jobs for free. You can make a, your company page can make a comment that says, we are hiring for production employees. We are looking for an operations manager. We are looking for this. Post the link to your website and it will automatically transfer it to that applicant tracking system that I was so against earlier. But I can tell you, it's a way to do it for free. And, and you can do this on all of these social media networks is post things for free without using any money, without having to collect things in all these different areas. You can post your advertisements on all of these social media networks. People can tag someone that might be interested. People can share it to their network of people who might be interested. So it's a way to let the system work for you without having to spend $500 every time you do it. So what I want to do is I want to go to LinkedIn right now. And I actually pre-selected, I did book manufacturer and production. Um, and so when I search that, it's going to show me anybody who has book manufacturer and the word production in their profile. So that may not be the best string. I, I asked Matt when he first got with me about um, doing this and I asked him, what is the most difficult position for you and your organizations to fill? So I wanted to make sure I, I did something where it might be relevant to what you're currently searching for. So here we've got somebody who's a publishing and production manager. Um, these might be useful to you. It might not. And I, I'm, I am going to try and speed up a little bit because I do not, I want to make sure I get a chance to get through everything. But some of these people might be what you're looking for. I would say, you know, even, uh, let's see, lightning press book printing. You know, this guy is a book binder printer at lightning press. So you look for him, you can connect with him, you can send him a message and really see kind of what he's interested. I mean, this might be somebody that somebody might be interested in. Um, so this is a good way you can enter it right into the top of LinkedIn. You do not have to have anything special. You can have a company page um, where I'm just going to go to my company page. You can have, uh, clearly I am very active with my company page on LinkedIn. <laughs> Um, I actually just use my personal a little bit more, but you know, you can, you can add articles, you can add different things. All of that is free with LinkedIn. You do not have to pay for this. So the next one um, that we've got is Indeed. This is not my favorite. They have recently changed the format where you have to pay a monthly fee to get resumes. Um, if $100 a month is not that bad for you or your organization, then it's definitely worth it. For me right now, it's not worth it um, because the quality that you get versus on LinkedIn versus Indeed, LinkedIn is much better. However, um, the searching capabilities on Indeed are pretty good. So I would also say, and, and I'm going to show you this, candidates who have not been updated recently, usually not worth the time. Um, sometimes they are, sometimes they're not. But here I use the parentheses, bindery or books. So it has to have bindery or books in their profile and the word production. Um, I did Jacksonville, Florida just because it's, it's so close. But, but here we've got this guy right here, James McKinley Watts. And, you know, now I can see where he's been working. He's been a man manager of bindery. You know, he's got a lot of experience with some of the things you guys might work. He's also been a cutter. I mean, he's definitely worked for a while within the industry. I would reach out to him and say, you know, this is where you reach out. Now, of course, this is not for the same organization because this is the advertisement I use for a company I work with. But I send this. I have a fantastic opportunity at a company who is literally helping save lives. Now, for that company, that's their people want to go work for them because they're helping to save lives. Their products are being used to help cure cancer, and that appeals to people. So this is where you enter the 
what's in it for them. This is where you enter the, you know, why would somebody leave their organization and come work for you? And, you know, I give them a little compliment at the end. Your vast experience is exactly what they're looking for. Then you add some of the job description and I keep it short. I don't, I don't want to make it long because people don't want to read long things. Um, and then I send it and you'd be surprised at how many people actually come back um, from something like that. And now I know James is experienced. I don't have to search through a bunch of things and you can save that and send it to all of these employees. Anybody who you're interested in, you can send that same message to. Okay, let me get back to the, sorry guys. Okay, so Facebook. Now, Facebook is not saturated with a lot of companies right now. It is not being used as a sourcing tool because a lot of people don't want to use it. And I get that. But that also means you can be ahead of the game. Um, groups on Facebook, when somebody is interested in a topic, they'll go join a group for that topic. You can create your own groups and have people join it. I think this is a, a very helpful tool to establish your organization as a brand. Getting your organization name, encourage your employees to say that they work at your organization, encouraging people to check in. It helps your brand. It helps show that you are a fun nice, you know, organization to work at that somebody might want to work for. You can also cross post. So you can actually take your LinkedIn and I'm going to show you a tool for that, but you can take your LinkedIn, your Indeed, maybe not Indeed, but you can cross post on your Facebook and there's a tool that makes it a lot easier for you to do that. So here, this is hard because there's not a lot in Facebook. So there's a job in Pinellas County, Florida um, for someone who's got experience bookbinding. So I just typed in bookbinding and operator, hoping that I would find some operators here. And I, I don't because there's not a lot. But if I did, now maybe here pretty soon I would see some of your organizations and people would join and people would get into these. So it's not a saturated market, which means that it's kind of difficult to show an example of, but there are pages for bookbinding. You can create a page for your business. You can connect with these other, these other groups and you can post in these other groups to say, hey, I am a book manufacturer in Jacksonville, Florida, and I am looking for XYZ. And that's a way for you to get the word out there to specific targeted groups that you know are going to have people who are qualified. So changing the ad structure, um, and I'm definitely going to rush through these because I want to get to an example, but ads should be an ad, not a job description. When you're looking at ads for something you want to purchase, you're not looking at the description of that product. You're looking at an advertisement. So you want to attract people to your position, not weed them out with a bunch of qualifications that they must have. You don't want to make it too wordy. It's not attractive when it's too wordy. And you definitely want to show the what's in it for them. So here is an example I found. Um, on the left is the current posting for an organization. Um, everything that they're posting. I would say they did a great job with the position summary. But from there, I mean, I can promise you none of you are reading that. You're all looking at the right hand. Um, and the right is a little bit more attractive. It's more of an advertisement. It is more of a what's in it for the candidate. How, what do we need from you? What will you learn from us? And, you know, this is something that you can shorten it because, again, you want people to apply. You want people to come and say, oh, yes, I absolutely would love to have a summer job doing this. Oh, okay, yeah, I can do all of these things. I can work 20 hours a week. That's awesome. Or somebody tell their son or daughter. And so I really think you want, the more, the more you get people attracted to your organization and what you have offering, the better it is for you. So weeding out the weeds. Um, you want to make sure that you are asking position appropriate questions. You don't want to ask a production employee, well, what do you think your strengths and weaknesses are? Because truthfully, 
it doesn't matter for the work that they're doing. You want to ask them, so what do you do if your car breaks down and you can't get to work? That's relevant. You want to say, you know, if you're in this situation where you're working on a production line and an employee is telling you how they are going to skip out on work the next day, what would you do in that situation? Or, do, you know, you want to ask them specific questions that are relevant to the work that they are going to be doing, not broad questions that are just to fit, figure out if they're going to say the right things. Don't trick candidates. I am not a fan of trick questions or trick this or trick that. Ask them point blank. Ask, be honest with them. You also want to acknowledge the bad. So you want to say if you work in a non-air conditioning facility where you're standing on your feet for eight hours a day, you want to say, hey, candidate, you're going to be working in a non-air conditioning facility where you're going to be standing on your feet for eight hours a day. How do you feel about that? And depending on what they say, now you're weeding out the people. Now you're asking them relevant questions to the job, weeding out some that may not get, you know, may not be the candidates you want to be the employees you want them to be. And then again, managing their expectations. I have a vice president of operations who's looking for, you know, he, he does have experience in book bindery. So if anybody's interested, I have to put in a plug there. But he went on a process that was three, four weeks long where there was no feedback. So you've got to manage no matter what the level, you've got to tell the candidate what to expect next. Um, because if you don't, you're not going to get that same respect back from them. So everyone has motivation for leaving their organization. And you've got to figure out what that, what that motivation is for them to come work for you. So CLAMPS is the acronym I use. They're either looking for a challenge, more or less, they're looking for a different location. They're looking for advancement, money, of course, people, stability. I literally ask candidates, everyone has one of these six, what is your number one motivation for wanting to leave your organization? And I give them this and I ask them the question and I let them answer it. Or I will say, what is your top three? Because now the candidate has told you, oh, well, I'm looking for more of a challenge and you can redirect the conversation to make sure they know how you as an organization can give them more of a challenge. So you gotta also think outside of the box. And some of the things I think you can do are a company hosted career fair um, where you advertise in either the newspaper or Craigslist for $25 at most. And you bring them in, you interview, you can do directly hiring on the spot. I say donuts and direct hire. You make it a Saturday morning. You have them come in, you have donuts, and you promise that for some, you will directly hire them on the spot. Um, speed hiring, I've had where, you know, they meet with the managers for five minutes and they have to go around the room and meet with HR and the managers, all they get is five minutes and then they switch, kind of like speed dating. But you get people in and out but you, prompt, you, you are able to get in front of them. And then your biggest asset to getting new people is to have a generous referral program. So encourage your current employees with motivation to hire somebody that they know and make it last. Um, I cannot tell you how beneficial that is because they will spread the word. They will do the advertisement for you. So here are some of the efficiency keys, uh, oh, tools that I use. Hold on, guys. Sorry about that. Um, Google plugins, and I'm going to show you my Google plugins, but I use Google Chrome, and I've got one tab here. I've got Grammarly, and I've got, you know, my, my system that I use, and it, um, it just helped. It's a fast button I hit. One tab is another one that I use. What it does is I could have 10 tabs open. I hit this button and it goes down to one and now it saved it. So it saves that exact page. So if I've got 15 profiles of potential candidates, I then do a one tab and I can go back and individually talk to those candidates and they don't get lost in the shuffle of things. Um, I love PDF is another one I love. It's a free program where you can change. This is kind of just a business thing, not really hiring, but you can take a PDF and merge it, split it, take it to a Word document, take it to an Excel, 
and it's free. So I love PDF as a tool I use every single day. Um, let's see, what else did I put on here? Calendly, it's a calendar thing. It just lets it where people can book things for your HR teams or your sourcing people, recruiters. It's a great way to send that to the people you're reaching out to and saying, hey, this links with my calendar. Schedule a time that works for your schedule best. Google Forms, again, I highly recommend this for employee surveys or quick responses from people, feedback. It's an easy link you can send to people and get feedback. And Hootsuite is a program that you can do all of your social media posting on one site. So I will try and log in, but I, you can literally see all of your social media sites and post the same thing on all of these. So I've got all of my Twitter accounts. Well, that's the organization I'm a, I'm a person for, but I've got all of my stuff here. I can post the same exact posting. Hey, we've got an open position for this and post it everywhere at the same time. So I'm saving time. I'm not going to each of these sites and trying to post the same information individually. I can do it all at once and it saves a lot of time. So that is it. I hope I left enough time for any questions you guys have, and I didn't talk too quickly at the at the very end. But um, Matt, does it you know does anyone have any questions that I can answer or anything out there? Yeah, th thanks, Emily. I think that was fantastic. Uh, a lot of information, but but all good for sure. Um, it, if you have a question, if you can either uh, use your chat uh, window to to type it to me or. It looks like there's a raise hand button, hopefully you have, uh, so that I can um, unmute you so we don't have a bunch of people talking at once. I think that would be the best way to go about it. So we'll, we'll open it up for any, any questions, e either way you want to wanna handle it. If anybody's got anything out there. No questions. I'm not seeing anything, but that doesn't mean it's it that uh, uh, I missed anything. So what I'm going to do is see if I can unmute everybody. Oh, you know what? I don't think I can because I'm going to reclaim being the host. Maybe that's my problem. Mm. Aha. All right, everybody's unmuted now, so we'll, we'll we'll just open it up to see if there's any questions before we wrap up. Speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> well, if anybody thinks of a question um, later on as they get going, you know, looking at the slides, maybe with the Boolean, or even if they want help kind of formulating that, that message to send out to candidates, I would be more than happy to help you guys through that. Just, um, Matt, you should have a connection thing to connect with me on LinkedIn. Yep. Or you guys can send me an email, whatever, whatever you want to do. I'm, I'm more than happy to help anybody develop that kind of, you know, sales pitch almost um, for your organizations. Uh, and yes, we will have a copy of the slides as well as a recording of the presentation up on the BMI website probably tomorrow at the latest. All right. Well, All right. Emily, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Great stuff. Uh, and for everyone who is on the call, thank you so much for joining us. And if you have any questions or comments specifically, feel free to contact me directly uh, and, and I can connect you with Emily. Um, if not, we'll have a copy of everything uh, up on the website. Uh, hopefully, like I said, by, by tomorrow. Well, I appreciate everyone's time. I know you are all incredibly busy, so I hope that you've got some value from this. And I, I definitely appreciate all of you coming on and joining us and, and listening to me gab. So thank you. Thank you, Emily. All right, everyone. Take care.